anyway, hello. Yeah. It's summertime. It's summer, summertime. summer, summertime. Okay. okay. <laughs> one of these, one, look, I, I want to get to the place in my life where I can just basically be in another country for the whole of summer. That's what uh, I want to do. That will not happen while I'm a staff nurse. <laughs> right. Right. Maybe as a travel nurse, but not as a staff nurse. What's up with travel nursing? Is that like something that interests you? No. Is that? Oh, no. Okay. Why? Is it, mm -hmm. is it just not stable enough in terms of like what you do for yeah. your actual job? Uh -huh. Also, I think if I was younger, it would be different. But like, okay. I, I'm more focused on setting up for retirement and I, I only have so many working years left in me. Yeah. And so time is sort of of the effort of the essence. If I was 20 Absolutely. and it, you know, I could just go make bank for, you know, a few years. Yeah. Um, you can make a lot of money. You can have a pretty decent schedule. You can travel around. Um, yeah, I would probably do that. But at 40, I kind of, I want to okay. secure a solid pension. <laughs> for sure. I dig all it, the yeah. really boring stuff. Um, yep. All the boring stuff. adulting so, stuff. Yep. Yeah, because my current gig has a really good uh, retirement sort of benefits package. So yeah. I got to give them like 20 years. So if I give them 20 years. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I'm with you there. That's Look, that's always on my mind, retirement. <laughs> you heard but that? If I give them 20 years. <laughs> but I give them 20 years, Naomi. For me, 20 years. Yeah. I'm basically 60. I don't yeah. think you can, you can cash out to... Probably, probably like 62 60, still, but like 65. 65. Yeah. Let's say 65. So it's only five. Yeah. Like I can do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if I can do the first 20. We're going to see, but I can do like, I can, if I make it through 20, I can do five more. Exactly. Essentially. Exactly. Exactly. Or we could both hit the lottery and then, you know, Hey, game over. So. Oh, that would be so lovely. I think I'd still work <laughs> per DM. I think it would be really hard unless I'm going like, like life literally altering like you are in a new stratosphere amounts of yes. money yes. um i think i'd still pick up like two shifts a month just to, yeah just to, just to get out of the house <laughs> yeah 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 i wouldn't care i wouldn't care i'd be like i'm here yeah. i'm gonna do a great job 12 hours and then fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. I love it. I love it. Anybody else think, out there who always thinking about retirement? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know it's we're important. not alone. It's very important. It's very important. We're like you know? your, 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 your old lady friends that are going right. to tell you prioritize. That's right. That's right. Put things. away for retirement right now. Don't wait. The earlier you I mean, start, the less you I mean, I did put, put away a lot of money for retirement when I was in my twenties yeah. and that has served me very well. Mm -hmm. Um, and continues to, and mm -hmm. I'm glad that I did that. So, especially yep. if you are lucky enough to have a job where they will match 100%. Ding, 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 that's me. Yep. Do it. Yep. Do it now. Do it, it do it, do it, do it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So. So, yeah. Well, we got a special episode today, don't we? We do. I'm really excited about this. Was really fun. Um, you led we, this charge, so thank you. I did lead this, you charge, led this charge from like start to finish. I yes, made me only read the book. I mm -hmm. set up the interview. Mm -hmm. It took us a while to get the interview because of various things, and it was so lovely. And, it really um, was. So we have a wonderful interview with C.J. Lee, who is the author of Mayfly, which is a new horror novel out from Tor Nightfire and it is so good. Oh my god. I love it so much. <laughs> it, great. it is like horror smut. Like I don't even yeah. know. It is so it's a, it's a few things, but it's fantastic. And it's funny and it's yeah. irreverent and it's just seedy and page turnery. And I all that good stuff. Absolutely adored it. And yeah. I CJ is like I think I'm obsessed with her now. Like, She's our I new best legitimately, friend. Legitimately, like, need you to be my best friend. She like, needs to come with us when we do our little book run. Mm -hmm. I think she would just love it, and we would have a blast. So, I will go to LA. Invite CJ. 
I will go to LA. Yeah. If I get to have dinner with CJ. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's my new Absolutely. that's my new obsession, CJ yeah. Wade. <laughs> it was such um, a great it was such a such a great conversation. It was. Yeah. So that's coming up, but you know, we have our normal intro and and everything. So Naomi, what have you been reading? <laughs> I'm gonna shock you with this one. <laughs> She's gonna be like, nothing. I hate books. <laughs> Listen, reading has been difficult. M- the move took over my life. But what do you mean? We hate it. we didn't have any life change. Oh, yeah, we we, we had none. I d- okay. All right. I decided to give a particular book a try because I thought, mm-hmm. okay, well. Maybe it's not trash and maybe I'll have a good time reading it because maybe it it's going to be fun. Was it Akatar? It well shucks. Yes and no. <laughs> um I tried reading the first book. That is a snooze fest. It's I, bad. I, the first book's bad. I, it was a snooze so fest. Bad. I was like I can't even get through 30% of this book, okay? The mm-hmm. book that I'm referring to is The Fourth Wing. <gasps> oh! Oh, settle down, ma'am. Don't get excited. <laughs> who are you? Who is not a Naomi book? New phone. Who this? Um. So I look. You know, I'm not really a fantasy romance kind of a lady. That's really not my jam. It's called romanticy, but yes, keep going. Oh, is that what? The, hang on a minute. Keep That's, going. Wait. Keep going. Okay. So, but I said okay. I saw it on, I think it was on Scribd, because you know I was not going to mm-hmm. buy that book. You know that. I'm not doing mm-hmm. that. I said, okay, well, I I can listen as I'm doing moving things. And so I listened to it. Look. <laughs> look, 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 look at the, like, you're going to justify, like, you enjoyed yourself, didn't you? I did not. <gasps> okay, that's fine. I, I, I did not. Here's the thing. I can see why people like it, especially if they don't read a lot of fantasy of like different jo- of different subgenres. I can mm-hmm. totally get it, right? But for me, I was bored as hell. Really? I mean, oh my God, Alyssa, I was so bored. Also, it was just a little bit too ridiculous for me. And also, it read too young. And so then when the sexy parts were coming, I was like, no, I'm just... I'm completely thrown off. That happens a lot, I feel like. Because I feel like a lot yeah. of authors write like YA stuff and yeah. then they get into romance and then it's like it was, weird it felt finding icky. their footing. It felt you know? very icky, but I was super bored. I was, I had several moments where I. I just can't imagine being bored reading oh, it. I, was, I can imagine I was not bored. liking it, but not being bored i mean i also did not like it but i understand why other people like it but i didn't like it because because i was bored and because i found no one in that story interesting or funny or anything i just had so much fun with it i just thought it was like it was a silly good time and i don't remember i don't even remember like like what's her even name? Oh, bo- what is her? i don't remember anybody's name like it was just fun no i wonder like i was like this would this would be I stand by the fact that this would be great for either by the pool or something stupid. Oh my gosh. And I would like throw it in the pool. Read. Like whoop, in the pool. Just but in there. Don't the get, deep end. The deep don't end. Don't get why everybody has lost their tits on this one. I don't know why well, everyone's so into I it. certainly don't understand. So here's what I was chasing, right? I was thinking back to when I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimber. You've been and I was chasing that high for Alyssa, you know I have. You know I have. That that's YA, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there is some romance in it, but it's not driven by romance. And I think that's another distinction that I don't like when things are necessarily driven by the romance. Well, but I like romance. So formulaic. It is like if you don't like books that follow that formula, then you're never gonna like it. But I think it that's is what my issue absolutely is. Absolutely a hundred percent formulaic. Like yeah. you can you can predict everything mm-hmm. that's going to happen in that book. Yeah. And that's why I don't like it's that's why I don't understand why it's like got hype and stuff because it's not good. It's never it's just it's, it's always just, the same. <laughs> it's just like this yeah. is a really fun way for me to pass. It's like watching 
reality TV or something. Like, it's like, you know, it's not mm-hmm. good. Right. But you're yeah. having fun. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't, but I, <laughs> I, I listen, I was like, may, maybe this is my next to curse so dark and lonely, you know? And so I mean, it was sold out. I, yeah. Like everywhere. Amazon. You had to wait I, a month. I know. Why? I don't, I don't know. Why? I I just don't know. I when I read people's comments like, oh, this book destroyed me, I'm like, how? What what destroyed? I am so lost. That was I'm not tr- destroyed. It's like, I, I, whatever. I had a good time. I was you like all, here for it. Yeah. I was like, ooh, you get it. Like I <laughs> I just I mean there's a I whole reading block. So I enjoyed myself, but I was so at bored. the end of the day, I don't know why. I don't know why, Naomi. I don't know why people are like I don't fan girling so hard over it. I don't know. And I, you know, I'm not sure if I would believe half of y'all. Some of y'all I think are lying. I'm just gonna say I think some I of you guys know. are lying because it's a very like popular book and you I don't know. I don't believe half of y'all. I'm sorry, I don't, but I did not think it was great. It was very boring. It was nothing like a curse so dark and lonely. When I talk about like just the feels, that is one book that had me read like late into the night. And you know I'm not a nighttime. She's not reader, a late into the night reader. But that book, that's all I do now. <laughs> right. So f- to all you fourth wing girlies, I'm I'm glad you found some joy in that book. Unfortunately, I found no joy in it for myself. That's what I have to say about that. Well, you know. <laughs> so what I want to say is I tried. You did, and I'm proud of you I for tried. trying and for stepping outside of your comfort zone. Yes. What do you call it? So the term is romantic. That's what we're saying. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. But like I like I re- I I don't read a lot of romance, but I've read a lot more romance than you have. I like yeah. sometimes the comfort of a really formulaic book like that. Yeah. And it's just easy to kind of get lost into it like like candy kind of like it's like or it's yeah comforting snack you know you just go in and you, yeah you read it and you know where you're going and yeah you i get can there. understand that yeah kind of the opposite of mayfly where you get into it you think you know where it's going and you mayfly, don't know anything <laughs> nope <laughs> just to circle this back to a segue you don't know anything <laughs> so well, anyway I- I don't have as an exciting book for you, but I picked it because it's, um, I believe, still going to be Women in Translation Month when this comes out, or it will have just ended. Mm -hmm. And I um, don't have a Women in Translation list this year because I am, I I have stupidly committed to reading all of the Booker long list before the short list comes out. And And I I did not get on that train. Yeah. So, so yeah, but I do have one. Okay. Put it in translation for you, and it is a horror, so it feels like this is the episode to stick it Ooh. in. Uh, and this, uh, and I have my brand new Kindle to show it to you on, but it's Earth Eater by Shut Dolores. Shut up, Reyes. Alyssa! No, wait a minute. <laughs> Shut up! It's okay. I read so, this, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> It is so dark and disturbing. Very it's very much. disturbing. And oh my it's gosh. very um, poignant at the same very time. Much and so. it reminded me a lot of the. Um, uh, there's a nonfiction book about the Highway of Tears in Canada and uh-huh. all the indigenous women that go missing. Yeah. And it reminded me a lot of that book um, and those like facts and how, yep. how sad this, how, how sort of ubiquitous this kind of is across the globe. Mm-hmm. But it's a story about a young girl who is uh, from the barrio. She is poor. She um, has this weird little thing about her where she can eat gift. dirt. And she can see basically like the dead, um, the bodies in the ground and yeah. people come to her and they bring her earth when they figure this out and they're trying to find their lost children and daughters and all these people. And it's a story about all the people really that go missing um, yeah. and are never found. And that is such a common story, uh, especially when you're talking about like marginalized groups mm-hmm. or just impoverished people or like people that are, you know, not 
don't look like me basically if you're yeah. not like white and upper middle class nobody is right. nobody is putting the same effort into finding you um and i just i thought it was beautiful it's uh translated from the spanish it's an argentine author and mm-hmm. it's it was so good it was so so good it and was. what i really liked was the afterward saying that how Dif- almost like how difficult this was to translate into English because mm-hmm. a lot of the language yes. has no direct translation, which makes yep. me so mad that I can't read Spanish. I know. And like, I almost want to find it in Spanish and mm-hmm. spend like what will probably be decades with Jesus trying to, trying read to it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Because. I feel like there's definitely, we talked about this in like the Tina Cover kind of a little bit. We touched on it, but like, Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so hard to like directly translate something. There's so much trying to find the right phrases to Mm -hmm. convey the same sorts of meanings and how much gets lost in that. I mean, I don't know because I can't read it any other language and, you know, it would be. Yeah, yeah, it would be really interesting. So, yeah, maybe maybe I'll find it, and, I know. and we can start a project with Jesus. <laughs> yes, that would be great. Um, this was a, it was a, it was a dark and, and heavy kind of a read, and yeah. I, I did enjoy it. Also, um, so when I went to uh, Delaware with the family for our little weekend beach getaway, mm-hmm. and I had went into a couple of stores, I picked this up, and yeah. so when I was pulling some books to read for the first week of one of the translation month. Um, and it's super I noticed short, so. it's super short, but I noticed mm-hmm. this is the same translator that translated Boulder. Oh, I mm-hmm. didn't know that. Yeah. Um, what I, the other thing I really liked about it is so like, uh, I don't know this Argentina. So like I have spent a decent chunk of time there mm-hmm. for us from like past life. And I don't know the side of Argentina where the people are poor. Like I I don't know that side because that was not what I was shown while I was there. So it's, it feels like you're opening up more of Mm -hmm. of a place that that I, I I Mm -hmm. know, you know, fairly well. So as, as an outsider, I know fairly well more than maybe anywhere else I've ever just traveled to. So it's, I I enjoyed that. Um, Yeah. And I feel the same way with Claudia Pinheiro. Like, I feel like she opens up, um, and this might be part of why I, I get attracted particularly to Argentine authors, is that there is a little bit more connection yeah. to place. And so mm-hmm. I have this, it, it's it's just, I don't know, maybe it's easier to connect with stuff. But um, They're so grounded from what I'm mm-hmm. finding when I read their works. They're just so grounded in what they're trying to um, relate to the reader and... I'm 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 carving a special like place in my heart for Argentina. For Argentina. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. So that's so trippy. That's trippy. That's, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. All right. So that was like cuz that's like I'm not going to have a lot of them this month, but which is not normal for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to have a lot sure because I am not doing the booker. I mean, aside from in Ascension which I had already ordered, you know, a few weeks ago, um and then the you know the two already read, but so that's that's it. I'll read the the rest at some other. I feel point like in time. you like Pearl. I just mm. finished it. But. I'm in this Instagram um, group, and they're talking. They're reading the book, so it's interesting hearing all of their opinions about the books they're they're reading from the from the long yeah. list. And Pearl I'm a was dis- a winner for a lot of them. I was in, I'm in a Discord group, and yeah. There's, <laughs> there's like one person that's really anti Pearl, and we're like. Oh. <laughs> wrong with you yeah (laughs) but like do we like my new kindle scribe okay so this is my first time seeing it 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 is large which is great Mm -hmm. when you have giant man hands yes i have enormous hands so this is the perfect size for me if you had tiny little dainty girl hands maybe not but for me it's you know it's lighter than my old ass ipad so it's it's pretty and this is the this is the model where you can write on it correct yeah, so you Have can you like, done it? Yeah. So you can you can like highlight stuff. Well, it's hard to do like on camera, but you can like highlight stuff. Okay. And then you can write a note. And then 
and, and then, then you just save the... it. So oh. like, you know, like when you have your highlights, uh, generally in a book. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, no. Yeah. So like they show up like in your notes, so you'll have oh, the highlight okay. and then you'll have your note. So. Okay. And um, do you, do you like this whole writing function? Okay. That's nice. I do. I'm and glad then... you screwed yourself. I did. I needed it. There was a tree on my car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know, a tree fell on my car. And in the chaos of dealing with that, I bought myself this. <laughs> and I think it's 1,000% warranted. So, And they're coming out with... Oh, I just smacked myself in the face. Uh, they are coming out with like more things that you can do where you would literally like write on the page. Like crossword puzzles and word searches and stuff oh, like that. Oh, well, that's fun. And then um, PDFs, I think you can, like, mark up. Okay. Like, like normal, you can mark up. I wonder, are they trying to uh, provide more features to uh, compete with that Remarkable device? I think so. I think they're trying to find some hybrid between them, because I think you can read on the Remarkable, too, but it's not yeah. as good of an experience as it is on a Kindle. Yeah. But, like, this writing experience isn't technically as good as, like, a Remarkable. But right. It's like, what do you do more? And then I don't really use this function yet, but there is like a notebook section and you can huh. like good notes kind of thing. But, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. But overall, it's a good little, experience. So that's great. Okay. Loving it. And there's your little mini Kindle scribe review. I like it. I like it. I got it my Kindle very... working again. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll, should I give you another quick surprise? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually used my Kindle. <laughs> I've been holding all this from Alyssa for like months. I used my Kindle. For what? I started, okay, I started reading um, Wandering In. Um, it's like, it's like um, RPG storytelling. Who was the lady that, I don't know her name, but. Wandering. Is it like, okay. Keep fantasy going. and she writes new chapters like every week it's crazy bananas is like, it like bella what's bella I, it's one of the kindle services but i think it's like no this is her website right mm -hmm. <laughs> she has a whole website um the wanderings in and what is what is her name you can read it on the website for free um, the first time I read it, I was in bed and I read like the first few chapters on my phone. The wandering in a tale of a girl and in, in a world full of something or other. Yeah. So as you cannot, there's no book. So either you're reading it on the Kindle or you're reading it on, on the computer or your phone. And I'm having a good time <laughs> with it. It's a little addicting. I like it a lot. Oh, they have audio books. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty fun. It's it's pretty fun. So um, I haven't read it in a while because I've been, you know, busy, but I can't wait to get back to it. I'm very excited. So wait, how do you read it on your Kindle? Oh, you, you just buy it. Oh, but that's because I have a hard time. You folks out there that can read on your phone. You're like magical to me. So oh, magical. I can't do that. That's... Um, yeah, like I did the first few chapters on my phone. Cause I just wanted to see like, what do I like it? And I do. Um, but yeah. So then the next option is, you know, Kindle. I might try the audio book. This looks adorable. Alyssa, it is. I think you'd like it. And the discord for it is bananas. It's bananas. Naomi, you've been hiding this from me. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much going on with it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody I know else what I'm out doing. there reading, wandering in? I know what I'm doing when we're done with this recording mm -hmm. session today. I'm playing in this world. Yeah, it's it's great. It's just a good time. It's a good time. So, I don't know. Like she cranks these chapters out like like a, I don't know, like a champ. 
<laughs> okay. The Wandering Inn, No Killing Goblins. She reads the signs outside the Wandering Inn, a small building run by a young woman named Erin Solstice. She serves pasta with sausage, blue fruit juice, and dead acid flies on request, and she comes from another world. Hours. It is a bad day when Erin finds herself transported to a fantastical world and nearly gets eaten by a dragon. She doesn't belong in a place where monsters attack. Monster attacks are a fact of life and where humans are one species among many, but, but she must adapt to her new life or die in a dangerous world where magic is real and people can level up and gain classes. Aaron Solstice must battle somewhat evil go goblins, deadly rock crabs and hungry necromancers. She is no warrior, no mage. Aaron Solstice runs it in. She's an innkeeper. It's you're going to love it. How? You're gonna love it. All right. Okay. All right. Now here's hold the on. thing. I'm hold, surprised hold, you don't know. I have, about this. I have a message. I yeah, this is I'm mad now. So oh, no. I have well, put no. out multiple community people. I have put out multiple calls for for things like this, and and uh -oh. nobody has suggested this. Uh oh. Nobody. Uh oh. Here's the thing. I'm surprised. I've known about this for quite some time from the fantasy people that I nobody. follow on BookTube. Nobody. What? How is this? How? How is this not come into my life? Anyway, that's fine. It's cool. It's here now. I've it's, all it's, is forgiven. It's here now. Are we following the same fantasy? Pe I got to give you my fantasy people too because I clearly know about, I've known about this for a long time. But like one night, I was like, "Oh, let me just let me Holy give it a try." Uh, it's so fun. Shit, the audiobooks are fifty two dollars. Kindle. <laughs> Well, the first ones are like in the 30s and then they're $52. For nice. those of you who are new here, this is me, Book Lady Reads, if you're not watching the video, um, I don't use my Kindle that I've owned for over no, a decade. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. I just, um, I don't really find it enjoyable, but um, only something like this could force me to use my Kindle because there's no way for me to get a physical book. Okay. Well, the audiobook is 43 hours and 10 minutes. So I will allow that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good time. <laughs> For those of you who are not watching the video, the, the, the shock and awe and Alyssa's face is quite comical. It's Naomi. quite comical. Well, shit. <laughs> there, I gave you two surprises. Two things you did not expect from me to say today. Well. <laughs> uh-huh. I may or may not have just added... The first one with the audible mm -hmm. attached to it. I love it. I it love had, it. For like ten dollars, I could get everything. I love it. Anyway, well, that's not the point of this episode. This episode is to talk it about May Fly. The point. It's absolutely the point. It's all books. This. It's absolutely the point. I have another surprise, but I'll save it for another episode. Okay, do that, please. I'll, I'll save it. All right. So anyway, um, enjoy this uh, conversation that we had with CJ Lee, the author of debut novel, Maeve Fly. And pick up a copy. Do it. We're really <laughs> excited to have CJ Lee here with us. She is a horror author, a hiker, a Trekkie. She has an MFA in creative writing from Columbia and a BA from NYU. And she studied mythology in the Middle Ages. Um, she can be found in LA with her boyfriend and four rescue dogs. And her unforgettable horror debut, Mayfly, which is out now, is a gore-soaked love letter to Los Angeles. And it will leave you with the most unsettling feelings about eggs in your entire life. <laughs> You have two more horror novels coming out through Tor Nightfire, and I can't wait to see what those bring. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to Jocelyn over at Tor and to CJ for coordinating all of this. It's been a long time coming, so we were really psyched to have you here. So welcome, CJ. Thank you. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So I guess I just want to kick it off with like, 
you know, like what inspired all this? Have you always written horror? Is this what you've wanted to do or you just found yourself gravitating to it? Um, I found, I discovered that I wanted to write when I was, uh, in my last year of undergrad. So I was like 23 and, uh, I tried kind of unsuccessfully a few times to uh, shop a book to get into grad school. I eventually got into grad school. And when I got there, I was handing stories in. And one of my professors said, um, I, I think you are a horror writer. And I was like, no, no, I'm definitely not. I've like never read a horror novel. Um, but like it turned out I was. So <laughs> then I got an education. Well, that's what Interesting. I mean. So Sometimes the best things happen by happy things. Something that you were intentionally trying to write. It was no, a discovery um, that your yeah, it really just kind That's of happened. So uh, and I've tried to write other things. I hope to write other things at one point, but really, like these are the stories I have for some reason. They're dark, and um, the horror community has been freaking awesome. And once I started like reading Stephen King, I was like oh okay yeah this is what I want to do so it, it was yeah. perfect I I, I, I yeah. bring on more dark I please <laughs> I mean I I loved Maeve she's twisted and she is funny and I, I like yeah. I liked her a lot but what exactly inspired Maeve because she's she seems this seems like a very special story um so I had moved to LA kind of right before COVID obviously not knowing it was coming mm -hmm. um and I moved from New York, which is a very different life than yes. pretty much anywhere else. And so um, I got to L.A. with my boyfriend and like I totally panicked and thought this was the worst move we ever could have made. And uh, and then we got stuck inside for a really long time. So um, I kind of decided to get to know the city in the ways that I could, which was like through books and through um driving around and just looking at things from inside the car and like you know reading reddit threads of like disney princesses <laughs> uh and so you know it uh it really kind of like in the process of writing the book i really fell in love with with the city and that was awesome and uh also just you know covid was such a time of like rage and pain and grief and fear mm -hmm. and i think like this was this was my scream in the dark so to speak. Yeah. now not in the dark now just everywhere everyone gets your scream I, I, it's a wonderful sure. scream so 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 i'm i i I grew up outside of new york and i lived in manhattan for a while i lived oh, i moved out again later and naomi's actually from la so it's mm -hmm. you've got a nice mix here of, of both yeah. sides um she's the new york girl i'm the la girl so that's pretty funny love that <laughs> i i gotta tell you like my my family's still in new york my friends mm -hmm. are in new york but like I don't really see myself leaving here. It's kind of really? it's under your skin. Yeah. It, there you go. It does. Yeah. So it my partner always wants you. me to go to LA and I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good here. That's fair. I mean, it's like, if you love New York city, don't leave and definitely don't come here. Cause you'll be like, this place sucks, but it's just, it's, like it's, its own thing. It's different. You know, it yeah. is different. Yeah. Different. I mean, I like Boston, which is like, could, you yeah, know, there's New Yorkers screaming saying that, but I, but I like Boston. Yeah. <laughs> it's still cold though, so I like it. Yeah. But um, do you want to give a little summary of Maeve, and then we'll sort of launch into more, you know? Oh, um, questions. <clears throat> yeah, I, it's funny. I haven't done that in a while. It's, it's <laughs> basically like a female. Uh, she's a princess by day at a Southern California amusement park that we may or may not have heard of. Uh, and by <laughs> night she uh, haunts dive bars and reads misanthropic literature and also uh, murders people. You know, <laughs> you know just your average, you know, story about a yeah. wholesome gal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I, I... <laughs> It's weird to say, but I sort of identified with her. But I promise I have no bodies in my basement. <laughs> so, at least not no currently that I'm aware you know? of. Right. <laughs> oh, God. So we we have to talk about this striking cover. Uh -huh. uh, the eyeball is extremely prominent, which, um, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of obsessed with. 
also there are some you know eyeball scenes in in the book eyeballs are pretty cringy do you have any weird fascinations with eyeballs in particular <laughs> just out of curiosity maybe i do i've kind of always liked like eyeball things um just aesthetically but mm -hmm. in terms of like you know detached ones and eye sockets mm -hmm. etc like mm -hmm. i do feel I think things with a face are particularly awful to think about. Um, and so, yes. yeah, I mean, it really, it really, uh, but it really became, I mean, it, it was because I wanted to rewrite story of the eye, which has to do with eyeballs. Um, and I mean, I may or may not have ordered that book the other day. <laughs> I, so. I have, some, I have some fears of reading it. Cause I know a lot of people that are like, I can't shake that book. It's, <laughs> It it's, sticks with it's you. It's really good. It's really good. It's very short. Um, mm -hmm. If you're like uh, particularly religious, maybe it might be tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's gross. It's gnarly. It's awesome. Love it's it. It's a great book. Okay. 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 I'll let it stick with me. I'll go go do it. Because I mean, by day, <laughs> um, I'm a nurse, and I will tell you that eye things, eye things always get me. I can do the yeah, gnarliest they're, they're stuff, really gnarly. and eye things are just like. <laughs> every time that, yeah. I love uh, finding like at parties any nurses doctors surgeons because like I just feel like all all of you love are to broken talk inside about <laughs> the, grossest, <laughs> the gnarliest things and I love it I'm always like what's the grossest thing you've ever seen at work and it's like oh, instant we've... like they're jumping yeah in. Uh huh. you have to remember when you're I not with it. like other people that that are okay with it to like not just say like how your day went or something because you're gonna defend or <laughs> discuss somebody somehow. Right. It is hard. No, to to me, I've given Naomi some it. good it's stories. The <laughs> it's the dream. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll try to think of some good ones, maybe for off camera, depending on how bad they are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people's fingers and toes like to fall off sometimes, so that's always a good time. That's a but anyway, it is. You know, it happens. And you just kind of watch it happen. Well, you don't watch it. You try to, for for my license's sake, we don't just watch it happen. But <laughs> things <Yeah>. progress. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so why did you decide to set this at not Disney, but Disney? Are you a big um, Disney fan? Is it really that big of Southern Californian culture to have Disney? So, first of all, I think my video has frozen here. Can you hear me? You have. I can hear you just fine. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. I feel so like neutral about this park and this company, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know people love it so much. I know people hate it so much. Um, mm -hmm. I, your service has been temporarily disconnected. Please hold. Hey, are you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. So it's, it told me three times that it won't let me join with video and I, I have no idea why. But it said I could do it with Mike only. All right. Okay. We'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sorry. I don't know what's going on. Um, no, it's all right. But but I am here. <laughs> that's the important part is that that's, you are here. Right. <laughs> computers are computers and they are a pain in the butt. Yes. Tech is totally. tech. Totally. Anyway. What were you? Oh, you were interjecting with the technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about princesses. Right. Generic, basic princesses. Generic. Yes. Princesses with ice. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. But yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy, uh, it's fun to get to see like the people who love uh, that corporation and how mm -hmm. they've interacted with the book and the people who can't stand it. And it seems like there's, it seems like there's fun. Uh, there's a lot of room to play with either and both. I think there's a lot of emotions in general around this book. Um, I think I I think what I love the most is how one you kept a little bit of um, lightheartedness in there because Maeve is funny. I know it she, is dark and grim, but she is funny. She's got yeah. a personality that is oh, it's, I love her. But Gideon's funny too. Gideon is funny, but mm -hmm. kind of like flip a bunch of things that people are used to the the whole like romance aspect of this that you have a horror romance that isn't going to follow convention 
um, yeah. in any way. Uh, I have received feedback from my review uh, over on my YouTube channel that's like, I hate it, the ending. You're like, oh, I wish you had just done. But I love it. I love mm -hmm. the way that you end this in a way that is unexpected because I think sometimes you kind of want that and it made you, it made me feel so many things. It wasn't just that nice tied up bow. Um, I have to agree. Totally. Well, thank you. I'm I'm so glad you felt that way. There was there was a lot of discussion about that ending. Mm -hmm. um, I bet. I bet. I, <laughs> I bet. She, she they, when Naomi finished it, she sent me a video. She's like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> well, it just to me, it was like there was no other way that it could end. Um, but it did. Like I I wrote that last scene. I knew how it was going to end. I knew the like the total last scene. Mm -hmm. way before I got there. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. I finally got to it and I, I wrote it out, I remember kind of like standing up from my desk and being like, I don't know, I just have to go for a run or something. Cause it just like, wow. I, I felt a little sick. It wow. didn't feel great doing it, but, but here we are. Spoiler, I guess too. Well, just <laughs> I imagine it was a hard decision <laughs> or you're going right. to love it, but I think it's, I think it's, right. I mean, it would be weird if it ended in, in a different way, in my opinion. I feel like that would not be true to the book or to the story or to kind of who Maeve is. I mean, she definitely is somebody who wants, she wants com like companionship in some way, but she definitely doesn't seem capable of opening herself up due to all of her other special things. qualities we'll just say <laughs> that she has going on with her special quality yeah <laughs> and you know it's i think that but i also think that's something that's very relatable maybe not the murdering bit but mm -hmm. you know the fact that we all have a lot of things that maybe we want to have a deeper connection with somebody but not feeling like we can or for various reasons you know not trusting yeah. somebody or just feeling different or unlovable or whatever it is and so there's a lot to 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 see in may or you know it, which you relate to in Maeve, I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. And I really appreciated that. Um, Cause you know, the, sometimes horror can just be very like gratuitously just violent and grotesque. Um, and this was, it wasn't just to be violent and grotesque. There was, there was stuff in there. You know, Maeve is dealing with a lot of grief. Um, and I love this exploration of loss and grief that you you're doing through out the story um as Maeve is stumbling around in dive bars and <laughs> hanging out with Gideon and doing questionable things to people with Gideon <laughs> right yeah, yeah. just they a have few little rocks. things yeah, <laughs> some, some, rocks. some roms you yeah. know you gotta throw in a rom yeah uh -huh. <laughs> so um, um I'm so glad I want yeah. I, I feel like because she had that very special connection with her grandmother also we love the grandmother right like mm -hmm. love her <laughs> and you know when someone sees you for who you are and doesn't make you feel awful for it and now you have this this connection I think that she also was on her way to truly finding that uh with Gideon there are so many lines of here I love but when the grandmother tells her you have to put your wolf to sleep he was sedated and secret and tucked away uh, it is the monkey's time. It is time, my girl, to learn to play pretend. And I think that she was realizing with Gideon that she didn't have to play pretend anymore, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of beautiful when you think about it, right? You think you're alone in this thing. Your your grandmother's dying. And she's the only one who knew who you were, the only one who understood you. But here comes along this person, so unexpected, and he sees you. He tells you he sees you. He gets you. And you start to think maybe you can be your whole true self with this individual. And there is a little beauty in that as well. Totally. And I, I think there's also uh, a lot, you know, in, in Maeve's case, it really frightens her because she is somebody who has sort of taken on this identity mm -hmm. of being not seen by the world and yeah. being sort of very, you know, isolated and mm -hmm. a lone player and what it means when somebody destabilizes your identity, yes. with their presence in your life is, is really kind of frightening. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's terrifying to be truly vulnerable with another person. Absolutely. And, uh, I think it really, you know, I, it's been a, an interesting process that, you know, some people read 
and really try to see a, a morally upstanding uh, protagonist. And that's how they connect. And yeah, I, you know, I can understand it, right? Because like in the world, you, I don't know, you want people to be good or whatever. Right. But, uh, you know, Maeve isn't that. She's just like, she's got a lot of problems mm-hmm. and she's like really imperfect. But I also think yeah. in the time that I wrote this, you know, like the world was crumbling in 50 ways and mm-hmm. everybody was so angry. And, yes. and sh- like we all had reasons to be angry and we all had reasons to be afraid. And I just, I wanted somebody who kind of like, embodied that but also was not beholden to all the things that made people angry and afraid in the world like she doesn't really have consequences she's mm-hmm. not really a victim of anybody but herself like Absolutely. she's she's not uh oppressed you know yeah and yeah. and i felt like there was a lot to be said for just getting to to live in that kind of space even if it's fantastical for like 280 pages mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times I think um, when you, because like when Tor reached out to me, I think I read like the first couple pages of the uh, the arc, and I was like, I, I'm here for the feminine rage that is just pouring out of <laughs> this book. Absolutely. And, and the truth is like so many books about feminine rage, like lean on a lot of the victimization that happens and, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's very valid. It is nice to have a character who is outside of that almost to like give you space to breathe and maybe yeah. go into a different area and explore different things than just all the stuff that we're so used to being upset about um yeah. and screaming about and raging against um you know she has a lot of autonomy over her own life and she makes she can do whatever she wants and Absolutely. she does i mean what yeah, does I mean, she say she's... this is my story and you cannot control it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad. Thank yeah. you. It's a great character. But you know really... who I didn't like? Susan Parker. That's who <laughs> I didn't like. <laughs> well, you you and me both. I know. And I guess oh, actually uh she's just she's fine. Yeah. She's just out there. Just just out there. <laughs> just out she's there. Just out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're we're doing more Maeve books, maybe uh maybe maybe down the line. Maeve gets more books? Okay. Oh, that Are is delightful. Gonna... Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Do we so... get a Tallulah book? Because that's this, what we, we want. We both want that so you know badly. What? I'm thinking maybe we've had a I've had a lot yes. of people ask, so maybe I gotta do it. Like even because just a little she's novella. Awesome. A little Tallulah novella. We don't, just don't like, care if it's just 98 pages. We just want more of grandma. We just want more of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you got wow. it. Deal. Actually, oh, that's, made our, <laughs> that just made yeah. me because <laughs> we were talking about that last night. Because <laughs> no, oh, I mean I man. think it's it's I love, I love that relationship and I love how, um, like they even have boundaries like like for each other, you know, Maeve touching her grandma really for like the first time, like really touching her to, to care for her. Like you can see how much like humanity and compassion there is in Maeve, even though she is very dark, twisted, murderous. She, (laughs) she does have a lot of humanity and like it, 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 she's a very complex character and I love a good complex character because so many things get boiled down to like much more like black and white absolutes and that's not the way the world works right that's, you know that's totally. not how humans are and so Absolutely. you know you can be a murderess and you can also really <laughs> cherish somebody mm-hmm. and murder to take care of them <laughs> yeah I mean I knew early on I decided I was like I can't write you know, I think we have a lot of nihilistic, um, <clears throat> bored characters in mm-hmm. the world. And, and honestly, I have fun with those books. I really enjoy them. And so many people do them so well. But that was the one thing I knew I didn't want to do. Like, I wanted Maeve to love things and mm-hmm. love people. And, you know, she's not, I like, she's not a textbook psychopath. Like, she really, really deeply cares about mm-hmm uh the people in her life just in a very kind of misguided extreme way yeah. but it's i i felt like it was so important to just have things that she had fun with and was mm-hmm. passionate about and then that was a whole lot of fun um 
to write as well. So has anybody made you a creepy doll? Um, <laughs> my mother has made like nine since I wrote the book. Actually, some really? of them went on my tour with me. Yeah. Uh, they're so really funny. disturbing. They're great. But yeah, only only my mom. Um, I've gotten a lot of eyeball gifts, which has been <laughs> which lovely. Is- yeah (laughs) we got a lot of eyeballs in the house and uh i'm sure i'll think of something else but yeah pina colada gifts a lot of pina Uh, uh, yeah yeah perfect drink right pardon my dogs (laughs) no i love i love that that's that's (laughs) my kind of life we have a plumber here so it's almost impossible to (laughs) keep them quiet (laughs) i'm actually shocked mine are quiet right now i mean the camera's not working. Let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> give them time. Then we used to editing that mine. So I, it's I am. I am. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta be honest. I was really, really worried that something terrible was going to happen between Maeve and Kate. Yeah, I was just like, she's like, wait a book, <laughs> you know, because they, like, yes, they're friends, and it was, it was a, it was a great friendship, and but something felt um, almost like, uh, like possession, like she felt like she possessed Kate, and I was getting very concerned about all of that, um, and then I was kind of glad that didn't happen because I think that's what would be expected. So, like, you're doing a lot of things that are very unexpected from someone reading a horror book and you got your, you know, your standard tropes and these certain scenes that are set up in a way where you think you know where it's going and then you just zag and go in a completely different direction. But I was waiting for something horrific to happen between them. Um, But then I was really pleased when it did not happen. You're you're full of surprises is what I really want to say. You're full of surprises. (laughs) I'll take it. Uh, I think the main thing is like, I think one surprise I've heard is like, you know, not really leaning into the police chase aspect of it or like, is she going to get caught? Yeah. You know, like I just went with what I felt like would be the most fun to write and the most fun to read. And uh, this is where we are. And it's actually been an amazing learning experience. And I now know for future books, like, you can literally do anything. Yes. I mean, like when you're writing, like we sort of forget that. Like you not when you're murdering. Do... Okay, you can't. Yeah, not... <laughs> Only when you're writing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Only when in you're writing. Fiction, yeah. In fiction, you can take it anywhere you want, and like nothing has to really even make sense if people yeah. just enjoy reading it. And right. you know, like uh, I'm sure that half this book doesn't make sense, but it didn't matter to me because it. Yeah. I got. I, I think I got the heart in it. Oh yeah. yeah. So that was what for mattered. sure. I don't think you needed like uh like are the police gonna catch on? There were enough moments where you kinda went, oh, wait, is this it? Mm-hmm. And then you would pass through it and you'd get back to the rest of the narrative, which was really what I cared about. I didn't I don't yeah. want her to get, you know, chased by cops or get in trouble. I wanted more fun and mayhem with Maeve. I didn't yes. <laughs> more fun and mayhem with Maeve. Yeah. That's great. That's like that's like her little uh, web show. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. lie. I have a soft spot for for hockey romance. So when you threw Love. in a giant hockey hottie, I was like, okay, total catnip for her. I just read my first hockey romance, actually, outside of, I guess, my own book, um, Icebreaker. It was a bop. Yeah, I mean, they, it's good. It's a good time. They're good. They, it's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like way to way to mesh some things I didn't really expect. Like it, it is a little weird to get a little saucy and also then murdery at the same time, but I'm cool with it. Like I think it's a great combination. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It works for me one thousand percent. One thousand. Well, it, they're probably always going to go together in my books. So Absolutely. Feel that way. Excellent. I look we forward. love peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> yes. You know what else I liked was the little, the, the stingy Jack story that's in here. I thought mm. that was quite good. Oh, yeah. I thought it was quite good. Thank you. Yeah. So that was very entertaining. I was kind of into that for a while. Um, I don't know. This book was just a joy to read. And I love, like, you just made my eyes want to fall out of my head and made my <laughs> jaw drop to the ground. I, I just, I, lo- I loved it. There are so many great characters in here. And it was gross 
and mm-hmm. grotesque and all of those things and hot. It was just, it was just a bowl of all kinds of emotions. And I was on the ride of my life. I really loved it. It was, it was a really good time. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. I'm so glad. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. <laughs> we wouldn't be here without you. Yeah. Needless to say, we're thrilled that we're going to get more Maeve in the future. So I, I wasn't expecting that. So that is like yeah. news on Christmas morning. Yeah. yeah. It was this hilarious thing where like my agent, from the moment we started sending out Maeve Fly, which was originally called just Maeve, um, from that moment he was like probably somebody's gonna ask you to write a sequel and I was like I'm never gonna do that and then like we got down the line and he's like are you are you sure you don't want to do a sequel I said I'm never gonna do that and it got to the point where like at one point he asked me and I was like I will never do it and then I'm in the car with my boyfriend and I'm like of course I would never do it and I would especially never do it this way where she moves to this place and does this and I would especially never do this and then like by the end of that drive I like had uh my you book had a too. whole new another so, book written like, and all. I was like fuck <laughs> <laughs> so oh, here wow. we are oh Maeve I, I well I can't wait I I, yeah. I want I want more I'm gonna be sad that certain people will be missing but it's okay yeah we'll get new ones yeah we're gonna get new new characters uh new are, are there gonna be animals are there gonna be new um terrifying moments with beauty products <laughs> no you know what i don't have great. any beauty product scenes right now like, how i think do i'm I gonna have this? to add one you're so right yeah I think that I was... was like on lunch break reading that which is a very strange place to be reading it and i was like oh my god please don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it really uh i was googling like how hot those get very and (laughs) very very hot three or four hundred degrees and i was like oh my god i'm gonna throw up (laughs) what does your google search look like is your (laughs) oh it's really bad it's really bad all the time (laughs) like it never gets less bad actually the nsa Um, man that follows you must be very traumatized they must have to swap them out every couple weeks i'm sure yeah i'm sure they're having a great time i i also have a cousin who is a uh surgeon and okay so she is an amazing resource because i'll be like okay well um theoretically like like if i was to try and detach a jaw for example she'd be like oh no problem this is what you would do and like she'll send me diagrams and she'll you know it's just like doctors wow kind of like sociopaths (laughs) but they have degrees and they've changed and and save lives yeah yeah you change your 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 questionable stuff into (laughs) saving lives Wow. There you go. <laughs> We're all a little broken inside. It's okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just alive. a little bit. I was happy to see that you actually, um, you have a Spotify list now with all of the uh, Halloween music. Do you know? Oh, yeah. I've like got one there. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's There's like, it's a very curated, pared down playlist. Um, mm-hmm. But I also have a longer one that's mm. I think it's called something stupid like Mayfly Party, but it was for my tour. But actually, I've left it up because I feel like why not extend the yeah extend the vibes yeah absolutely. Do do you, did you do you have a natural love of Halloween music, or did you develop a love of Halloween music alongside writing Mave? I have a love of Halloween, and uh, I grew up in a house that was like my parents are musicians. Like mm-hmm. music was everywhere. Yeah. Um, the two things didn't really like combine more than any other normal person until this book. <laughs> but now I'm like, <laughs> of course, like these are the best songs there are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. So, <laughs> sorry, we love Halloween in this house too. We're very excited that it's time. That we've gotten right. through like Fourth of July, I can start, you know, adding Finally, to my collection of Halloween goodies. But yeah. I think all the summer summer holidays are crap, is how they I are. feel. Like they're fine, whatever. It's hot and like America, but yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just want I just want the spooky shit to come back. Right, and, like, candy. Come on, costumes. Yeah. It's the best. I'm here yeah. for it. You're not alone. You're not alone. I will one day, my, my, my dreams are to one day be the kind of person who can have like 
the kind of Halloween decor outside that's like children are terrified to come to your house, but also want to come to your house. You know, like, it's like so scary. They, they want to live like they're mm-hmm. each other to go. Um, and I also want to be the crazy lady that has like the super Christmas decorations, but I don't have that kind of, I don't have the ability to pay that electric bill. So nor right. a ladder. So right. those in my head, like that's, that's who I am. I mean, absolutely. Right. Those, those like Home Depot animatronics. Oh my gosh. One yeah. a year. Yeah. One Same. a year we I allow ourselves the... to buy, but they're so fucking crazy. They and are. They're really expensive. Have you seen the Headless Horseman? That's the one I want. <laughs> yes. Really bad day. Oh, wow. And I want him in my front yard. They're all so good. We always want to do like the 12 foot skeleton, but yeah. I, I feel like with earthquakes, I'm like, that thing's going to come mm. through our window or like land on the car. That could end you know badly. What I mean? <laughs> Just, yeah. I can't right? figure out where to store him. And when I say we'll oh, leave yeah. him out all year and like decorate him, that's not been accepted as a solution. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That, that sounds really difficult. That's really sad. Isn't that sad? <laughs> could you imagine a 12 foot skeleton Santa? I think that he would be cute. I'm I mean, or he, Krampus. Would, he would be the dream. I wanted an animatronic Krampus for Christmas. And Love. I, I yeah. think I upset my mother when I showed it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Krampus is the best, actually. Christmas horror, I feel like, is the most underrated horror genre there is. Oh, I totally yeah. agree. Maeve at Christmas. Christmas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Christmas with Maeve. Right? Holidays yeah, with Maeve. Special. So there is a... Um, there's a B movie called Delta Delta Die, and they make um, mince pies out of fraternity boys and sell them. <laughs> like they have like B movie like crazy sex things, and then they like churn up these boys and to make them into mince pies. You could totally have a Mave mince pie Christmas. Oh my gosh! I mean, I don't know how I could top that though. That sounds pretty perfect. <laughs> you need to find Delta Delta Dies. <laughs> I'm going to watch it for sure. I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it's, it's the weird niche information I keep stored in my head. <laughs> now it's good. Now I get to pass it along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So do you have any now, like now that you've been, you know, revealed to be a, you know, a horror chick, um, do you have some favorites, some movies or stories? Totally. Ooh. Um, I guess maybe I have to narrow it down. Well, okay. So my favorite book um, that's not like Stephen King Mm -hmm. is, uh, well, I don't know. There are so many. Mm -hmm. I really love, I saw The Changeling is about to be a show and Mm -hmm. I love that book so much. Victor Laval. Victor Laval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the best. Um, I love the library at Mount Char. I oh, that was freaking read weird. That one. I haven't read that one yet. Oh, it's such a bop. It is so, f- I've read it like 11 times. I'm it's not even kidding. It's crazy. It's crazy. So good. All right. I need to move um, it forward. <laughs> move it, move it like all the way up, honestly. It's so freaking good. Um, and and Nightfire is putting out so many amazing books. I love Joe Hill. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just like, there's so, there's such a wealth of of yeah. horror literature in the world right now. It's kind of like unbelievable. Yeah. So I'm I lucky. Kind of like it though. I feel like yeah. You know, it scratches a different itch than a lot of different things. And we've For just sure. gone through. I mean, every generation goes through bad things. I mean, I think that Billy Joel and whoever just redid we did start the fire whose name is escaping me. I think we know it. There's always stuff going on, but. There's just been such a condensed, I feel like, in like a short period of time. So much oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. I think, like, yeah, you want the sort of escapism of maybe some lighter things, but yep. sometimes you want the escapism of the darker things. Like you need absolutely to embrace I mean, completely. the, the and, Like and you know? yeah. I, I think a lot about how, I don't know if you remember in 2016, right around the time of the election, mm-hmm. did you, do you remember these clowns that were popping yes! up? Yes. Like clowns that were like murdering what? people. Yeah. What so was first that? of all, first of all, it's horrific and it mm-hmm. sounds awful. I don't really know very much about it. Um, second of all, totally disappeared. But mm-hmm. I, I think about right. it a lot that like that time period was so freaking crazy. Mm-hmm. But like in a way, thinking about the clowns is so much better than thinking about everything else. And I think even though even though that's so awful and like it, I don't I don't know what happened, but it seems like it was really bad. Never want that to happen. But right. The point being, like, like absurdity mm-hmm. in times of darkness just felt to me like, okay, maybe that's something to hold on to. Maybe that's something to look at, you know? 
probably because there's an element of like that can't really be happening. Exactly. But, I mean, it's you're literally living the thing. Obviously, if you were a victim of these crazy clowns, I think it's they a were. Story. I think they were just scaring people. Right. I, I actually they were happened. Like, weren't they? Yeah, like, I thought they, they were like, just like popping pulling, up. I know there was also a thing in the city a couple years ago where like you were you would just knock out random strangers. Oh no, that's that. Oh my god. But it, that wasn't clowns. Yeah. No, no, no. The clowns, but they were just appearing. They were I thought in like the woods or like they would just sort of but they were menacing clowns not that all clowns aren't menacing but right okay (laughs) all clowns are menacing yeah 100 (laughs) percent clowns are are like top tier terrifying yeah (laughs) yes yeah but i'm but i'm gonna just choose to remember that these were not murdering clowns and i don't think they were (laughs) yeah maybe they were just like menacing to the point of just yeah they were just scary and weird um have, in any have case have you seen the drug stuff that's and not to like just no. to like add to this so there's a new tranquilizer that's being used recreationally and i think it started on the west coast and it's come all the way to like philly now and if you like google like things with like philly like tranquilizer i guess i can't remember what it's called they literally look like zombies because oh that's yeah how, seen oh my that. god and like there's just people like bent over yeah, like like in all the images that you think of when you think like a slow moving zombie that's not actually actively attacking you, like yeah. that's and there's just hordes of people and it's yes. sad because you know people are, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on so wow. people are escaping in different ways but like we actually uh-huh. kind of have zombies now and just wow, well, <laughs> just yeah. to bring horror a... full circle. <laughs> yeah, oh exactly. I know things are crazy. So I I prefer Krampus. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, like, I like Krampus. I like the fake stuff. I like Maeve in her bouncing around town yeah. trying to get you know racist trumper ladies canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> Oh, suck it, Susan Parker. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that I I did excuse, I, maybe not agree, but I wasn't totally upset at everybody that she murdered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Which like <laughs> mm-hmm. I I wanted to give enough to give her a logic, but at the same time, like, so I've gotten uh. Some people who don't like the book, like when they get to like, there's a tour bus scene and uh, they'll be like, but this just didn't make sense. And I'm like, yeah, but it didn't have to, you know, like I, it's fiction. And also like, I just kind of felt like I had to remind the reader, like, this is not a morally upstanding protagonist. She's just not. And so uh, it is what it is. Yeah. It's so interesting because like through all of this, I on every level for some reason i'm still rooting for mave mm-hmm. i like mave a great deal i don't want anything bad to happen to her i want her to get away with everything and now maybe i need to go to therapy and see what all of that's about <laughs> because i adore mave but she is psycho but i want her to be protected i want her to have happiness Although she is ruining lives. I think it's kind of like the Dexter effect. Like, you know, you are generally not okay with murdering, but when right. put in a certain way, perhaps I'm okay with it. <laughs> right. I would love for Maeve yeah. and Dexter to have lunch. You know? <laughs> Strike a friendship. The crossover you didn't know was going to happen. You know? Spe- but speaking of that, I do feel like Maeve reads very cinematically. And oh, Maeve very much. And a fantastic movie. We talked about that um, last night, too, thank CJ. You. It would be quite a yeah. romp. Mm-hmm. <laughs> noir well, style. We will see what happens. See, uh, you were saying noir, and I was thinking more like, kind of like a 90s kind of vibe. Ooh, I don't or know that. why. I can, I could do it. Can I mean, you do I- a 90s noir? <laughs> I'll, I'll uh thing? right does that exist <laughs> do we oh make God, it exist it. <laughs> film gods yeah she has like the angst of a reality bites character and mm. like yeah totally yeah. i love her <laughs> that's what yeah. i think is like it just 
uh, there's a lot to be said for just getting to be with a rage monster for a oh, while. And yes. and the other thing is, I think too, like the one thing about her is she's so loyal. Mm-hmm. And I think that the people who do connect with her, like on some level, that's that it's what it has to be, right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like that she just is somebody who will do literally anything, even psycho shit for the yep. people she loves, even if it's really, really not helpful. Yeah. So. Even if it's to the detriment of her own self. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And everybody. Mm-hmm. She will she will try. Yeah. I was rereading the the, the that ending climax um this morning and I and I realized just how much seeing and eyes play throughout the entire story it is yeah. and it circled me right back to how cringy and i was <laughs> <laughs> well it yeah. sounds like you would know from work i hope i hope you don't have to interact with too many eyeballs i don't but, do um, eyeballs I, I've great I'll, I, fantastic i shove a lot of things in a lot of people and take a lot of people but not eyeballs <laughs> i don't do eyeball things you know? not what i do do you, so in terms of like influences is it since you've discovered your your horror side or or is it is it a Stephen King really pushing you forward or are there maybe some lesser known people that you've found along your way yeah absolutely I mean uh I read like three books a week so Mm -hmm. uh there are always people coming in (laughs) yeah it's I I can tell I love I love the bookshelves in the background (laughs) I like that Um, Naomi built bookshelves that are like my bookshelves they were not like this like a little bit ago oh like you could almost think we're in the same room we're not exactly (laughs) they're quite beautiful both of them thank you um (laughs) I think there are so many I recently discovered a guy I always like really hesitate to recommend anybody who's dead and from a certain time period and who I haven't read all their work. Mm -hmm. So like if he's written anything horrible, like I am, I don't, stand with that okay yeah but it is difficult it's a bit of a minefield it feels yeah it is it's a minefield talk about somebody I mean completely and you figure like somebody who's put out a ton of work probably has done something not great in the past at least once so uh that said there's a guy called Theodore Sturgeon and I never read any of his books or novellas yeah he writes like a lot of or he wrote a lot of like short stories and novellas and I just read one for the first time this year and it so deeply disturbed me. And then I went and looked, and I'm a I'm a big Trekkie, as my bio says. Mm-hmm. And he wrote two of like the most famous iconic Star Trek episodes like of all time. And really? he was this guy who put out he was so prolific. He put out, I don't know, like I feel like over a hundred novellas and short stories. And like he just nobody really talks about him. But so I don't know, maybe his other work is crazy, but the one story I read was incredible. All right. Huh. And what's so that's, that's a recent what, one. What's a Sturgeon's Law? Wait, hold on. Ninety percent of science fiction is crud, but then ninety percent of everything is crud. That's his law. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, it's it's not a bad one. <laughs> it, seems, it, seems, it seems like it makes sense. Oh, I, I'll have to find some of these. Yeah. But so I, I don't know, but so this is the kind of stuff like I try to go to like used bookstores and find mm-hmm. like old things oh, and yeah, weird things, person. and mm-hmm. you know just see what happens. And sometimes it's terrible, but often it's awesome. Yeah, I believe that's oh, some you... of the best book discovery. Just going to the used bookstore and mm-hmm. just number one, setting aside the time to just really peruse all of the shelves and just totally. picking up whatever calls to you. Like just pick it mm-hmm. up. Give it a try. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And there are so many like really amazing women writing horror right now. And that's yeah. been so cool. Even like people that I've just gotten to know through Nightfire who are like, I- I'm I'm meeting them, but I'm like, I'm a really, really big fan of your book. Oh, <laughs> um, you saw, like, a picture. Was, did you have a thing in the city with like Katrina Ward and somebody else? Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've read... I, I think I read all her books, but one, but Sundial. Oh my I God. love Sundial. Mm. And I, oh. I remember there being a lot of like mixed feelings while I was reading it. I thought it was, I was here. So for it. good. I mean, they're all, all of her books are amazing, but like I go out to the desert a lot here and like that really kind of like, it really got under my skin. Wow. And uh, another great desert book is uh, Night's Edge that just came out. Liz Karen. It's oh, kind of I like, think- I think I have an arc of that somewhere. Yeah, I have to pull that out. 
it's tour. amazing. It's, called it's, Night's it's like Edge? a vampire abuse book. Yeah, Night's Edge. Where mm, like okay. uh, the main character's mom is like a literal and like figurative vampire. Oh. I'm it's always great. here for a vampire, uh, you know, story. Like a- always. Right? Always. And this was a really unique one. I'm I'm here for vampires too. I feel like they're they're coming back right now. They I have are. A and I'm and, and I'm I welcome hope it. Coming back in a different way. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no more I sparkles. I mean, I whatever. But I, I I you know I like I like all vampires. I like sexy vampires. I like you know. But yeah, yeah. they, they should them. also be vicious, like really mm-hmm. vicious. They're vampires. Yeah, I completely agree. I do completely have nice edge. I I will um. I will, oh, I so I see that's going to be a series. <laughs> so that's a series. Uh, yeah, I think okay. her second book comes out in, I think, next spring. Yeah. So it's like locked and loaded. Nice. Okay. That's great. Tor, <clears throat> Tor and all Tor related um, subsidiaries keeps me absolutely spoiled in books and I love them yeah. to no end. So I, I, they're wonderful people. I think you're with a really great um, yeah. group of like, like everyone. Top publisher I've, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too. They've yeah. been really like yeah. it's been kind of a dream scenario. So I'm I'm so lucky. Right, so and now with this whole Nightfire thing to really, you know, segment out the the horror that was like I think, I think a good indication that like we just said, more horror is coming down the pike from many authors. So yeah, it's nice to have a dedicated imprint for that. Yeah. Absolutely. I got to go uh, to the office in New York when I was there for my book launch. Oh. And uh, it's it's huge, right? It's mm-hmm. like multiple floors because it's Macmillan and yeah. then like Tor has one floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went in and they've got all these shelves of all these books. And I'm like, my eyes were like freaking dinner plates. And I was like, staring at like just like a wall of of uh you know these are all the old like fantasy guys like yeah. Robert Jordan Brandon Sanderson oh, yeah. like, uh Jane Yolen all these people and I was just like I'm freaking out and I said do you do you just look around every day here and like say oh my god I get to work here and they're like I mean I guess like I don't know <laughs> like it's just Whatever. a job for them we're all like right. oh my god yeah like, and they, I think they're just maybe not as I'm not as starstruck as I am, but I, it really like I couldn't I couldn't really like get it together when I was there because it really is so much history too. I mean, yes, that's what it is. probably for you as well. Like that, those books, the sci-fi fantasy mm-hmm. books from back then, like that's what I grew up finding mm-hmm. in the school library, yeah. and like mm-hmm. that's what really like you know so lit this fire. Yeah, yeah. I remember when everybody was working from home and they would do like um you know, like social media takeovers and everybody on tour would be like t- you know changing off every couple of days or whatever when they would do this and you would see everybody's shelves and the th- you could tell the passion of everybody who worked there because you know yeah. people would be showing their bookshelves you know and then you'd go to the next whoever it was and they would and you had these old tattered you know tour paperbacks from you know mass market paperbacks from whatever like so you know, time so or whatever great. and you're like, oh. <laughs> like so i love great. it so much yeah. it really makes you feel like you know like a part of something yeah yeah pretty amazing yep. like, we're all dorks together <laughs> it's the best thing to wait like how do other people who are not dorks or nerds or geeks like how do they find friends as adults Oh, I don't know. Like, what do they do? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, pick yeah. up soccer, I guess. Like, I don't know. I think they but... have, like, softball leagues and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't... I don't. You know what it is? They just have work friends. I'm not yeah, a part of those clubs because I hate work friends. But, like, I know it's even, <laughs> even where I work, a lot of those people have been there, like, 15 to, like, 30 years. And, like, mm-hmm. they are, like, work family. And they yeah. do things mm-hmm. together. They're really close. So it's like they have their home family but then they have like the work family and those relationships are really strong yeah I don't think I'm the same person at work like I know I'm still weird but like I don't think I'm as it's a little bit toned down yeah like I don't know if I would be at work and be like you know I have this some if people ask me for recommendations all the time and like I really have to be like well what do you like because if I tell you just something I'm enjoying you might be terrified 
that uh, you should I told do you that. that. I mean, you should <laughs> just say the exactly. craziest thing, you know, and then you're going to weed them out really fast and find the cool ones. <laughs> like that, Alyssa, <laughs> like, she is weird. Because <laughs> I mean, that first week in my new job, I was reading Maeve um, and I was like, please, nobody ask me what I'm reading because I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know you yet. And I right. Don't you want to know about some of this. Exactly. Well, you- It's so funny, like on Instagram, you know, like I'll get tagged in things that people post about the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that happens a lot is like people who like it, they'll be like, um, okay, I really liked this book, but like, but like, you don't have to. And like, I don't want it to say anything bad about me. And like, if if you don't like it, like, that's, that's it. Like, just don't look at me differently. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There were there were times there were there were moments where I was like, "Do did we just unlock a new kink that I didn't know existed?" Because right. I I I am questioning myself at this point. That's what this book will I'm make so you do. I'm so honored. Yeah, for sure. Read me. Love to hear it. We'll unlock new kinks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> This was so great. Oh. I so thank you. I just thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on to discuss this whole journey with us. Um, we look forward to more Maeve. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. I mean, I'm I'm so sorry that my uh, my camera, for whatever reason, went on vacation today. But um, I'm so honored to be here. I love the podcast. So Listen, this is just, really cool. We're just going to extend the invitation now for the next Maeve book. You know, oh, just great. please come back. Open talk door more. to TV on low down to come back on to, you know, talk about, you know, the next Maeve. We are one thousand percent here for that and excited about it. I again did not know you're gonna drop that bomb today, but so excited. So I excited. I could have really like built it up better. Like yeah. I should have I should have made a better plan for that. But um I'm I'm so stoked. I'm so in and I just I would love to just get to hang with you both again. Soon. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Anytime. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry that LA stole you. <laughs> well, I'm I'm back a lot, so you're uh, gonna see like sunshine and like I know. colors and things. <laughs> like I know it's uh it's very weird, but uh, generally great. I am happy here. Generally, I <laughs> I actually just feel like um I smile sometimes, so that's that's trick. what happens. That's what happens. <laughs> Every time he tries to get me, he's like, we should move to Southern California. I'm like, I cannot, I cannot have that much happiness. I'm sorry. I, I understand. Need, I need darkness and yeah. dreariness and cold and anger so that I can be happy in the happy times. <laughs> here's, here's what I'm gonna if say, I don't though. have that balance. If you're, if you're in the sunshine of California and you're like angry, that strangeness yeah. is almost like the most it's like the darkest thing there is so yeah. so really if anything like you go mega dark here oh god i don't know if we want me to go mega dark. <laughs> i don't know i kind of want to see you what know. that looks like <laughs> sounds exciting no i'm a little scared of mega dark Alyssa. <laughs> say bring it <laughs> bring it say you just say bring just, it you just like to stir the little pot around and watch her little blinds as i i don't i don't know if i have the capacity to be that happy naomi you can't do that to me it could be very dangerous like what if i just start like being happy all the time i mean I know, it's terrifying it's terrifying just saying it's a great place <laughs> you know. honestly a very good halloween here like i thought oh. halloween here by comparison would be awful because like the northeast is beautiful mm-hmm. in the fall and whatever but i have to say la does a lot to compensate for the lack the of hot weather absolutely like the decorations here yeah. the halloween parties like the way the parks do it everywhere. It's awesome. It's probably easier also when you're in your like college years when you're, you know, dressed a little scantily for Halloween to be on Halloween in LA. Um, yeah. yeah. And for those of us adults who still do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. And, and I've gotten, I don't know them. But. I've gotten too fluffy to be like that. So <laughs> Yeah. Every year I say I'm gonna dress up as a uh, Smeagol. <gasps> and I think I'm gonna do it this year. I think I gotta I gotta you figure got the out ball the wig cap and everything. 
Oh yeah. my gosh, it's gonna be so great. <laughs> I think it'd be good. I would do that with Azus. I would smeagle. I we love could double smeagol. Oh, we can <laughs> buy coast smeagol. <laughs> coast to coast smeagling. <laughs> I think we're doing it. I love, I love that. I have such a soft spot for Smeagol. I feel like he's misunderstood. And I Absolutely. get side eye when I say that in this household. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's corrupt. I said, he's a victim. <laughs> he really is, actually. Thank you. He's That's an eternal funny. victim, pretty much. I mean, it's Some so sad. People are just flawed, and he's a victim. They yeah. took advantage of his flaws, and he's a victim. The evil very took true. advantage of him. <laughs> so funny. Very true. Oh my god. He's the star. He's downstairs listening to this, and he's probably like shaking his head aggressively. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, well, I can't wait to buy Coastal Smeagol with you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I I am also so excited. Yes, thank and, you. Uh, Thank you again just for like reading and supporting and uh, being down to, uh, you know, get crazy in a fictional world. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. I'm down for whatever Maeve has next. That's right. Here <laughs> for it. Here for it. I mean, she's done hockey. I mean, she could go. Can she have a billionaire romance? I mean, she could have any, she can do any whatever romance she wants. She wants whatever I she think- wants. I'm so happy to hear that. I do think we're probably done with sports. Yeah, um, I, I, I think that I think was she's that, scarred. Really. She can't go to sports. Okay, that was. There good. are yeah. other industries that are just just prime for the taking. Nobody will be Gideon. Okay. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, Gideon. But, I know. But a girl has needs. So. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh God! I mean, I was kind of waiting for like Kate and them to have more and i know that she addresses that i think <laughs> like she's like but you kind of like you, you can always go back and try yeah. again Why not? you never know and maybe maybe if i get stuck on uh story ideas i'll just i'll write you two to yeah. see what you're thinking <laughs> i'll come up with something crazy i'll see yes. what happened at work well you know yeah perfect exactly perfect <laughs> i wish i worked in the ed for you they have the best stories honestly oh like, i bet they really do i bet the things people put in their yeah. 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 And their special places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that they accidentally fall on. Yes. Right. It accidentally <laughs> got in there. Yeah. Whoopsie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I sent you the potato thing. We can discuss the potato off air. But potato? I'll tell you the potato story when we when we wrap up. Wow. <laughs> and leave everybody wanting wow. more. <laughs> I'm happy I get to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> It's it's horticultural. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for joining right. us. Um, I hope everybody gets a chance to, if we haven't scared you off, pick up a copy of yes. Fly and give it a read. Pick it, it is, up, read it. It is twisted. Embrace your twisted side. It is a fun ride. It um, is all yeah. the way through. It's a fun wild ride. You will not regret it. Somebody over there is getting fancy, okay? Someone's over there getting real creative and well, real fancy. Well, can they fancy. make it where when you have more than two people, it, it doesn't, doesn't F up? up. I'm real nervous Anyway. About that. Okay, hello. Hope you enjoyed that interview with the CD lead. <laughs> yes. So a huge thank you for CJ for coming on. Yes. Um, and talking to us and being so flexible with us because yes. we did have some mm-hmm. scheduling issues in there. And uh, we hope you found her as just Delightful. wonderful as we did. Um, I want to go to a Halloween party with yeah. CJ. That's what I want to do. For sure. And drink. And I think about the Gollum, the Gollum mm. Wars mm. almost daily. It's like, I, do I trust this golem this year? I yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> That's I it. don't think it'll That's be hard answer. to convince Tezus to be like <laughs> Gandalf or something. So he yeah. will have the lead to it. So. Oh my god, I love we shall that. see. Yeah, so everyone, if you haven't already grabbed a copy of Mayfly, please run out and get it. You will not regret it. Uh and then read it and then come on our TBR lowdown instagram or join our discord and let us know what you thought about it uh did you finish the story of the eye no i didn't but 
I am about halfway through. Mm. Did you finish? Yes. Okay. Hold your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Hold your thoughts. Because I do want to talk about that. This because I also have a clip. Look. I also have a clip to send you that. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. I have yeah. some notes in there. Because I was like, wait a minute. I am. I'm, a, I'm disturbed now. <laughs> I'm very disturbed. I had yeah. a long uh, voice note back and forth with, uh, with somebody about it. Actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When I have finished, because they, they, they had read, read it, it. Mm -hmm. and just talking about like absurdist novels and yeah, is there a difference if you're being intentionally offensive? Oh, mm -hmm. I don't like yeah. whole conversation. So anyway, yeah. Um, what do you have a book recommendation? I do. Um, it's not fourth wing. <laughs> it's not fourth wing. I'm sorry. It's not. Sorry. It's a curse so dark and lonely. <laughs> it is. It is. You know what? It's absolutely a curse so dark and lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. You need to read that book. Okay? Just read it. It's a trilogy, but I'm just saying nothing hits like that first one. It's just perfection. All right? The first cut is the deepest. It's the deepest. All right? <laughs> Love you, Bridget. You are my girl. Love you. And she's so delightful. Um... I I do have a recommendation, and I have to give you, it's two, but it's by the same person. Okay. Okay. It's Falling and Drowning by T.J. Newman. Who would have thought? <laughs> I keep seeing those, and I can't process that they're different books because the covers look very similar. The covers are very, very similar. Um, Did you read them on your Kindle? No. I listened to okay. them on audio. Ho ho! I know I am effing your head up on this episode, right? Totally just jamming it every which way. You know, <laughs> we took a break for life things and this woman came back a new person. I don't know her. I, okay. So what, I think one of these is on our, is our Libby, one of our mm -hmm. Libby um, arcs. Right. And I, I think I found the other one on script, I believe. I you know, look, when you're packing, I don't know. When you're packing, you get really bored, man. You know, and it's like yeah. I have YouTube myself out, I've TV myself out, and I was like, you know what? Let me let me try this 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 TJ Newman lady. Let me let me give that a whirl. Let me tell you something. These books are highly entertaining. Okay, people They're great. really like them because it's it's absolutely high entertainment value. I loved it. Stakes are high. You're having a good time. People are dying. <laughs> You know, a hero's coming. you know a hero's coming you don't know who's the hero it's great it was just a well, good time if there is death then you know i'm here for it listen and I, i'm also getting so i don't know if this is i can't think of anyone uh, at, at the top of my head but like this tj newman and what's the other guy's name um uh brandon slocum where they like pick a particular lane or, or or like a like a topic and stick with it, you know, with him with the violin and, and the music stuff, and then and then T.J. Newman with, with 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 the airline flight stuff, and they just write books in those lanes. It's just interesting to see how clever and creative they can get with it. Well, I am hesitant as somebody who's afraid of flying. Are you afraid of flying? Why don't I know this? Do you not know this? Do you not know that I have to drug myself to get on a plane? I have literally never heard that come out of your mouth. I did not know that. Oh my gosh. And maybe don't, don't listen to these books then. Naomi, I take like a Valium and have a glass of wine and I'm still like. Oh, I don't know what. I, I gave don't know Jesus. Don't, don't share your drugs, folks. I gave Jesus the Valium because we had a really terrible flight back from Spain. It was like yeah. we were sandwiched in like sardines and if you don't know this about us we are both above averagely tall for our yes they our, are our genders and and so i was like here babe sleep and he was like out like out i literally had like two tiny bottles of wine read like six books like <laughs> wow i was like no i'm not i'm too anxious what okay so I don't know. Could you enjoy also, something like also, this? Also, don't mix, don't mix your pills and booze, folks. Don't take any yeah, of this don't advice. Do that, this advice. None of this is advice. This is just it's an anecdote. It's not advice. It's just story hour. 
but so okay now okay so with you having this anxiety around flying are you able to enjoy a book like this probably not naomi do not read them i mean it's definitely like you know panic button time with these books i mean like no get, get no your blood rushing you know no i don't need to uh, no okay all right so skip them but all you other folks out there who don't have anxiety around flying read falling and drowning it's just a good time it's a good time but guess what i have i have good news for you okay i do not have an expired password oh are you within a year of it expiring no it, it okay. will be expired it, it, but I thought everything happened in July. This is September. So I'm okay. going to be ahead of the game when I go tomorrow to get my Okay, husband. my goodness. I was laying my little head down to sleep the other night and I went. <laughs> it's like when you're asleep and then you wake up like, where's my birth certificate? It's like those kind of moments. <laughs> I think it's because in my brain, I was like, July, July, you need to do this. You need to get this yeah. done by July. And then July just went. Bing. Exactly. I know. Here well, we are. Yeah. I have a different book for you that doesn't okay. involve any of my particular neuroses. Okay. <laughs> and that is Daughter of Smoke and Fire by Ava Homa. Oh, um, oh, beautiful. Folks, if you're not watching this on the video, this cover is beautiful. Then this is a special edition wow. from Unplugged Book Box. It's, it's particularly beautiful. Um, oh, let me see those edges. Oh, so, my God. Gosh. It's very shiny and the that edges are really pretty. beautiful. So this is the story of a girl named Layla and she is um, Kurdish and living in Iran. And she is, it's just really like her story of her growing up, but it's also uh, the story of her brother who is sort of like a dissident and her father who was similar and had been in jail and like how he became a broken man um before she was even ever like born um right. it talks about you know the the erasure of of or the attempt to sort of erase erase Kurd the kurdish people uh how they are people without a home um the just the violence and fear and worries and struggles under you know living in iran as a woman in particular but also yeah. as a kurdish person um it is a beautifully written book it is really difficult to read at times and it's, it, i'm surprised more people don't talk about it it's like a couple years old but not that mm. old and i have never heard of it i need more people to read it i think it is um I think it is kind of as eye-opening as maybe like Kite Runner maybe was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it has the same kind of like triggering crazy moment. It's not the same right. story in any way, but I think it is eye-opening to a Western reader in a way that perhaps Kite Runner was at its time. And I I thoroughly enjoyed this and I, I just need more people to read it. So please go find it. Uh, check it out at your okay. library do something and i believe oh i'm trying to find it here i think this is like one of the first books written by like in english by a kurdish uh -huh. writer or something like that it's oh, wow. it's it's really interesting it's really sad it's really there's a lot of commentary on like how the area got divided up by like Europe and things and how they just kind of lost all of their land and mm. were never really accounted for when the Middle East was getting divided up by like England and everybody. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I feel like there's so much to the world that it's almost impossible to know it all, but I love books like this to open up a piece. Like, I feel like that's the same with like, um, my pen is a, pen, a wing of a bird. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had moments where it felt like that too, where it, the reality of living under so much stress and yep. danger and how yep. your life still goes on mm -hmm. but you know you have morality police chasing you around exactly. and then when you throw in the fact of everything that's been going on in iran in more recent terms you can hear mercy yep. squeaking a toy um it is um yeah yeah so please please it pick this up 
wonderful daughters of daughter of smoke and fire okay it's really 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 good you will particularly love this yeah i'm i'm interested now please read this important read so folks just in case if you're new here you don't know we have a uh storefront on bookshop and so every book that we talk about at the top of the show and that we recommend we have it in a list on our bookshop.org page so check that out yes and or go to your library yeah yeah wow that's that sounds really good Mm -hmm. i haven't heard anything about that book that was not on my radar whatsoever i love that that's what i do that's what you do i love it all right anyway (sighs) time to wrap up this episode here anyway people um thanks for tuning in and again please go pick up a copy of mayfly yes you won't regret it please you do. won't regret it and then yeah. tell us all of your thoughts tell us all about it you can live. Right. i was gonna say you could live tweet them to us but that isn't even a thing anymore you can, you can live thread it you know <laughs> if you're on blue sky you can do it over there you know whatever yeah, I mean, tickles your fancy social media platforms you know it's I still wild. think about Blue Sky filings, not Blue Sky being a is a financial filing. It's 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 a thing. <laughs> the only thing about it is because it's still invite only, like all of your people probably aren't there yet, so it's just a little slow going. But in the same breath, you are getting to know other people that were completely off your radar. So that's nice. Um mm. unlike threads where, you know. It's basically your same folks if you choose to yeah. follow them. Yeah. I did not click the follow all button on threads. I didn't have a follow all button. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. No, not when I joined. It didn't exist. Okay. I did follow everybody that was, essentially everybody that was there when I signed up, but I haven't really followed many people since. Yeah. I'm keeping I've threads been more kind of tight. Yeah, I'm keeping threads kind of tight. So, but anyway, yeah, we're everywhere, folks. <laughs> We're on all the things. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. We're out of here. Bye. Bye.